entire summer off like a lot of radio shows in this area do. Right. Well, We're not here. a lot, but some radio shows take the whole <laughs> summer off. Maybe we should, though, because every week somebody's missing. <laughs> that is true. Welcome back, Junkies fans, to WatchTheJunkies.com. I'm Adam Epstein, joined by Cakes from the Junkies here. You know, a good show today, a lot going on this weekend with all your DC sports. Yeah, the Redskins had a big fight with the Texans down at training camp. The Nats struggled at home uh, at the end of their seven-game homestand. Uh, let the Rockies come in and take two out of three. So not a good weekend for the Nats. They have to go out and play ten out west now. So it's going to be tough for them uh, to claw back against the Mets. I have no idea about Worth, but I, don't, I just know he's not a 190 hitter. I just know he's not. He's so start, that's going to come around. He's starting to come around. You can tell. And, and Rendon, I expect, he was the best player on his team last year. So I think the bats just have to be patient. I know it's annoying. <laughs> you have to be patient. So we had some callers on the show telling us, you know, the Nats aren't, it's not, they're not out of the picture yet. And then you had some callers that saying it's over. What are your thoughts? It's man? a mixed bag. Uh, I just think if, if Strasburg comes back and pitches like he did over the weekend and some of the guys just keep hitting and keep building on that base that they've uh, been working on since they went through their rehab assignments, guys like Worth, Zimmerman, then the team will be in good shape. The pitching has to be top notch though. If that doesn't happen, they're not going to be able to contend. It's a whole history of baseball where adequate teams just get in the spot and then they pitch well and that's that. Well, I've seen it in every sport where you just sure. have to be hot at the right time. Right, and maybe, you know, maybe instead of coasting in with a 20-game lead like they did in the past, maybe hustling to get in will keep them sharp. I'm trying to be optimistic, but right. they got a chance. And then Rick Snyder from the Washington Express comes on and tells us, you know, his insight on Brandon Scherf going to guard. Yeah, and, and, you know, it's a thing where the Redskins took him at number five overall, and people are going to say, ah, it's, you know, they're going to nitpick and say it's too high for a guy who's going to play in the interior of your line. But if, if the guy's a stalwart on your line for a decade, it doesn't matter where you pick him. If he's productive, people aren't going to worry about that. Do you think Sheriff eventually becomes the right tackle, or do you think if he just shows that he's a better guard than a potential tackle, they just keep him there? He's a guard. He's a guard. <laughs> you know, this was all said before the draft. And it's all true. You know, the dude's just not quite a tackle. He doesn't have quite the length of reach, you know, for these out outside guys and all. And, and so you sit there, I wrote a column the other day saying, well, a number five pick on a guard, he better be Russ Grimm. For Cakes, I'm Adam. Watch the junkies.com, 6 to 10 every morning. Thanks. You wonder why Donald Trump is so popular, despite being a misogynist <laughs> and everything else. Because the guy brags about his cash. That's like, all he does. We're all envious. <laughs> hey, he claims he's got $10 billion. Now, I find that number hard to believe, but... 10 maybe. billion or 1 billion, either way, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right. envious, Kate. Right.